Still looking at natural selection, this time investigating changes in trait distribution. So here we have two different histograms, and these histograms show the distribution of fur level traits in a population at two different points in time. You notice we have generation one and the same population A at generation 50. So I want you to examine those two histograms and notice um, what you can about the variation and distribution of these two populations. So let's make sure we understand what a population is. A group of the same type of organism living in the same area. So here is our rough skin newt, a bunch of rough skin newts, and the Oregon State Park is a population of rough skin newts. Variation, again, reviewing these keywords, is any difference in traits between individuals, uh, individual organisms. So the osteolopes from last lesson, we have green and we have yellow and we have blue. Those are differences in traits, so they show us variation in that population. Distribution is the number of individuals with each trait in a population. And again, represented here by color, blue, green, and yellow, and you can see how many of each there are in that histogram. So here is a new word that we're introducing to you today, a generation. A generation is a group of individuals born and living at about the same time. So to make it clear to you, it'd be like you, your parents, and your grandparents, three different generations all living at the same time. So now we get to check, do you understand what's happening in these graphs? So check question number one, do the histograms show the same amount of variation in the population at both generations? Question number two, do the histograms show the same amount of traits in the population at both generations? What is the term used to describe a group of individuals born and living at about the same time? All right, so the population here in population A at generation number one started with a distribution where most of the australopes had a low amount of fur. You can see that low in one and two there on the histogram. There were also seven different fur traits in the population. So you can see from one through seven. So the variation is high at generation number one. At generation 50, the distribution was different since most of the australopes had high amount of fur. You can see seven there is the highest different look than we had in generation number one. Additionally, there was less variation since there were only for four fur traits. So you can see four, five, six, and seven. So a lower variation than what we see in generation number one. So our key concept from this to little review is the number of individuals with each trait in a population can change over time. So make sure you take note of that key concept. Here's an investigation question for you. You can see this image of the deer. We have one brown deer, three white deer. We want to know what makes the distribution of traits in a population change. So again, using modeling, here are a couple different types of models. They create, or excuse me, scientists create models to communicate ideas about how things work. Some models are physical models, like we see here, a globe and a model of a cell. Other models are computer program models, like ones that will predict the weather or our natural selection simulation you are using for our unit. We could also have diagrams as models, like a diagram of a food web or of the water cycle. In our lessons for this unit, we will be looking at a special modeling tool. And as you know, these are called histograms. Okay, so they're going to be able to help us model how populations will change over time. 
So again, histograms here, there are two histograms that represent the same population at two different points in time. So that's represented up here. We have our starting population and we have our population after 50 generations. They give us a timeline in this model. We also want to make sure we see the environmental conditions labeled there. So in population that's starting out, we have an environment that's changing from warm to cold. And after population of 50 generations, the environment is just cold. We also have some trait labels, right? So a positive S means it's likely to survive. A negative S means it's less likely to survive. So examining this model, which australopes would be more likely to survive in an environment changing from warm to cold? So as you can see here, the model demonstrates traits for high fur levels are adaptive traits in a cold environment because they help australopes survive in cold environments. So australopes with less fur will get colder faster and be more difficult to survive. And we can see that change from the starting population to 50 generations. Though fur level traits make it difficult to survive in a cold environment, this means traits for lower fur levels are non-adaptive traits in cold environments. So a couple key concepts to take from this. Over many generations, individuals with adaptive traits become more common in a population, while individuals with non-adaptive traits become less common. The second key concept we learn from this model is traits that exist in a population determine which traits can become more common over many generations. So make sure you're taking note of those key concepts for this unit.